Well, it is a privilege and an honor to be with you all here tonight. It is not by anything but the grace of God that I am standing before you, getting to present the word before you tonight. If you'd have told me five, six years ago that you that I would be presenting the word to you tonight, I would look at you and smile in the face and think in my head, he must have a concussion. I don't know what's going on. But it is with the utmost privilege and the utmost reverence that I'm here before you. For those of you who do not know me well or do not know me at all, my name is Jairus. I serve as our next-gen pastor here, and so I oversee our middle school ministry as well as our youth ministry, our high schoolers, and I get to pastor our young adults, Q1. Where we at, Q1? Turn them up. Don't turn them down. So within that, in Q1, our main goal is to empower the next generation to do and be all it is that God has called them to. And unless you've been living under a rock, This world is fading away and it's rotting. And so our next generation needs to be empowered to do and be all that God has called them to. And yes, God is all powerful. He is all knowing and he can equip us well and he has been. But our next generation is looking to you guys to be the example as faithful men and women of God to continue your calling until the kingdom come and thy will be done. Because there is always somebody looking at you as an influence. So how are you carrying your mantle of influence? How are you being that model for the next generation to come? Just imagine in a few years when we're in your shoes and there's the next generation. How are we training up the child in the way that he or she should go so that as they get older, they will not depart from it? I want to chew on that tonight because I do have faith in our next generation. It is not because of myself or anything that I have accomplished. It is not by my own merit, by my own strength, but it is our Father in heaven who wills us to strength and to act in accordance with the will of God. Amen? So I believe, with all that said, that he can and will empower those who are willing to humble themselves, no matter your age, your race, your gender, where you come from, your background, no matter how how much you have fallen from grace, it's not about how you fail, it's about how you've gotten up and continue, continued in the way of the everlasting. So tonight I want to remind you that you can receive supernatural empowerment. Somebody say power. power. Say it again, power. power. Now this time I want you to say it with authority and declaration. Power. power. Tonight's message title is called The Empowered One. Now we must not forget that with great responsibility comes what? With great power, (laughs) got ahead of myself. We must not forget that with great responsibility comes what? Great responsibility. See, I done tripped you up. With great power comes great responsibility. And what could be a greater responsibility than carrying out the will of our Father? I reckon there is no such greater task. I reckon there is no such greater privilege than to go and share the good news of the gospel that I was once lost and now I am found and redeemed by the blood of Christ. And I believe I'm talking to some mighty men and women of God tonight. All right, just making sure. So I would love to pray and I would love for you to pray with me so we can humble ourselves to receive God's word for us tonight. Amen. But Father, we thank you that your word is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Father, I pray that you would pierce the hearts and minds of every person in this room tonight, that we would receive your word tonight with the utmost humility, God, and just lead us where you would desire for us to go tonight. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So rest assured of this, Philippians 1, 6, that he who began a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, the time of his return. See, God has prepared great works in advance for each one of us to do. You are not here by mistake. You are not an accident. What makes you think you're so special that God forgot to assign you purpose and you're just walking on this earth with nothing to do? No, God has assigned each and every one of us a purpose. We are here for a purpose, on purpose. And I know many people struggle with that idea But I want to remind you tonight that the Lord wants to empower you to do and be all that he has called you to. So it's not a matter of whether or not he's called you. It's a matter of whether or not you're going to heed the call. The first one I want to make tonight is that the empowered one lives to do the will of the Father. John 14, 12 through 14, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these 
because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. I can remember the first time I read that scripture and I was like, Jesus, I cannot do anything remotely close to what you did. I was just starting to read the Bible and trying to comprehend it and understand it for myself. But somebody say context is key. Context is absolutely key. What Jesus is essentially saying here is that our belief in him and our devotion to him, following him with heart and mind, we can leave a powerful impact on the lost lambs and help in the ministry of reconciliation that goes far beyond the bounds of where his original ministry has taken place. Apart from Christ, you and I can accomplish nothing, nothing of eternal value, nothing of significance. So in the short, the temporary fades. But somebody say this. He who strengthens me will finish the work he started in me. Jesus says, Matthew 5, 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Simply meaning this. There is no amount of work. There is no amount of service that you can do that can earn you the love of God. There is nothing that you can bring to the table that he can't bring for himself. Blessed are the poor in spirit, meaning that I am utterly spiritually bankrupt. I have nothing but a debt that is owed, and I cannot pay it. And when I recognize that and I look to Jesus to be that blessing for me, that sacrifice for me, I can inherit the kingdom of God. You can inherit the kingdom of God. Amen? So no one gets to the Father except through the Son. And in right standings with God the Father, we can discern his will through the God the Holy Spirit. Second point tonight, the empowered one heeds divine instruction. We cannot discern the will of God through our own efforts. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is made attainable upon salvation. Before Jesus ascends into heaven, he promises not to leave us to figure things out on our own because he knows that... <laughs> We are not trustworthy. We cannot trust ourselves. The heart is deceitful beyond cure. Who can truly understand it? But the advocate in John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you things, teach you all things, and will remind you of everything I have said to you. And we need to be reminded because we can be forgetful, right? But I think oftentimes it's not that we necessarily forgot. I honestly believe that it's just negligence. But the Lord loves us enough to not let us stay in our foolishness. But sometimes I do also believe that it is genuinely an ignorance. Ignorance as in a lack of knowledge. And from this angle, I want to remind you that ignorance is bliss. And though you can have an ignorance just simply meaning you don't know, what do you do? Father, search my heart. Show me your ways. If there is anything in me that is offensive to you, reveal it to me because I don't even want to step into sin or live in sin and not even be aware of it. I need your wisdom. I need divine instruction so that I can carry out the purposes and plans that you have for me without finding fault, to be blameless, right? Holy Spirit is the discerning voice of God leading us into the way everlasting. And the world cannot be guided by the Holy Spirit because the world does not know the Holy Spirit. And so it is of the utmost importance that you and I do all that we can to stop bringing grief upon the Holy Spirit. Why do I say that? God desires for us to be hearers of the word and not just doers of the word. The Holy Spirit acts as a guide in the sense that he, not it, he encourages, corrects, and convicts. He encourages us to have more of a heart of the Father and that less of the world. He corrects us from having improper views or misguided theology, and he enlightens us in the way of wisdom. And he convicts us when we turn away from him, leading us in a motion to repent, to change one's mind and follow back in the way that he has guided us in. Acts 1.8, but you will receive power. Somebody say power. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Grieving the Holy Spirit blocks, and in worst case scenario, case scenario, prohibits the call and the blessing of God being manifest in your life. Do you want to receive all that God has for you? Yeah, I don't sound too sure tonight. Yes. Do y'all want to receive all that God has for you and his people? Yes. 
It's making sure I'm talking to the right people tonight. The empowered one is to be a witness. Say it with me again. He who strengthens me will finish the work he started in me. Now, do you believe that? Amen. Make it sure. <laughs> it is only by God. It is only through God. And it is by his power alone. First John 2, 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes, the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But listen in close. Whoever, whoever does the will of God abides forever. Whoever does the will of God, you can say like this, remains forever, everlasting. And that's good news for the believer. But it's even greater news for the empowered believer. And I think there is a drastic difference between the two. Because a lot of people can accept the fact that I need Jesus because I am a sinner. And so they recognize that they need a savior. But they still walk in control of their own life, desiring the desires of the flesh. And they recognize that they're sinful, but they don't allow him to do the work to sanctify, to clean them through and through. So that when he does come back, they can receive the inheritance. But the empowered believer, on the other hand, says, I need him as both Lord and Savior because I am a sinner. I owe a debt that I cannot fulfill. But I also need a Lord because if I don't have a Lord, I'm going to continue to go back to the things that once I thought were feeding me, but they're actually killing me. And so within that, when you are empowered, you are empowered to do with that. You, you are empowered to live a life and do what you cannot do beyond yourself. And it's grieving because People have been shown, people do know, there's people who have been taught and raised in church of the truth of the gospel. But I've learned in life that we can do a lot more when we pray for those individuals rather than gossiping about those individuals or complaining about those individuals. Lord, I want to see them saved. Lord, do whatever it is you need to do so that they can be saved. I believe it for the prodigals. If you have a prodigal or a wayward son or daughter, I'm believing that the Lord can restore, can heal, can lead them back into this house or whatever house it needs to be that is preaching the truth of the gospel with sound doctrine so that they can be empowered to lead the next generation. Who will lead the next generation? Who will lead the next generation into the way everlasting? Because it is his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So if you really want it, God will give you the power to carry through. He's not asking you to do it by yourself. And many of us have tried. We've had all these different vices. Maybe it was the club. Maybe it was the party scene. Maybe it was relationships, lust, greed, gossip. But at the end of the day, when we fulfilled ourselves in those things, we realized we actually weren't. Those things never filled us, and they were never intended to. It's funny. My growing up, my mom would say all these different sayings, and I'm one of five. I'm the middle child. Middle people, middle child is where you at? Come on, shout out. So uh, we started this this note thread in our family group chat, and my mom would say all these funny things growing up. But it was a lot of wisdom behind it. But like, she would say stuff like this: "You cannot convince a monkey that honey is sweeter than a banana." I'm like, woman, what? <laughs> You cannot convince a monkey that honey is sweeter, sweeter than a banana. Why? Because they're naturally bent. It is in their DNA. Desire, if, even if they desire something sweeter than that, when they see a banana and they see a honey, they're going to go towards the honey. And similarly, we as natural born sinners, we're naturally bent to go towards the desires of the flesh. But when the Holy Spirit comes in and starts to correct and give us more of an appetite for the things of God. It is a constant discipline to not go back to that of the old, but embrace that of which is new, right? And so you cannot convince a monkey that honey is sweeter than a banana. Amen? <laughs> so let me remind you also that sin is not natural. God did not create sin. God is not a sinner, nor can he sin. It is not in his order. James 1.3, excuse me, one thirteen. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. 
Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings about death. So don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. And what the enemy has done has come into our society and said, that's not true. You're struggling with identity. You're struggling with sexuality. We see perversion in this generation like never before. And it's celebrated. And he's corrupted the minds of believers and on alike, so much so that what is actually good has turned bad. And what has been bad has been praised as good. But let me remind you tonight that the grass is not greener on the other side. The Holy Spirit is our advocate fighting for us to have a change in life. An advocate is someone who fights for change. Holy Spirit is fighting for you to forever be changed, forever be transformed by the power of his spirit. And it's up to you whether or not you're going to heed that instruction. He who strengthens me will finish the work that he has started in me. And when you proceed in the will of the Father... You will be attacked harder by the enemy. However, point number three, the empowered one prevails against the enemy. Satan, go ahead and go home. No business here. What the enemy can't have, he'll distract. Because he knows that you were once deceived, that he once had you entangled in sin, and you've been enlightened by the truth of the gospel, that somebody loved you enough to tell you, hey, that's not right. There's a God who loves you. There's a God who wants you to be reconciled to him. There's a God who absolutely desires for you to know him. And this way of life will never lead you into life everlasting. But within that, the Lord will go and fight for you. You need only to be still. And let's talk about being still, because often it's misconstrued about what it means to be still. Being still does not mean, well, I'm going to wait on God, but I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to read my Bible. I'm not going to worship. I don't feel like going to church today. You know, it's not, that is not being still. That, <laughs> that is being in the old ways. That's what you did before. You didn't read. You didn't attend church. You didn't accept discipleship accountability. But when you know better, you do better. So what it actually means to be still is to let go and cease of your operation. Cease the control over your life and allow the Lord to align your steps. He is a lamp to the feet and a light to the path. So are you willing to be guided by him every step of the way? His kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus says, Matthew 11, 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you're fighting the fight without Jesus, I understand why you're burnt out. If you're fighting the fight without Jesus, I understand why you're tired. I understand why you want to quit. And that's because the battle was never yours to begin with. The battle belongs to the Lord. So it's time that we stop striving and start abiding. He says, apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine. You are the branch. Every branch that does not produce fruit is cut off. But though the battle is long, it will not last always because Jesus is coming back. Amen. But we still have an assignment. Matthew 28. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Pause. What did he just say in Matthew 11? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. It reminds me of another verse, 2 Timothy 2.2. 2, and the things that you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will be qualified to teach others. Well, what qualifies me to teach somebody else? I have been taught in the way. I have been groomed in the way so that whenever I do decide that I want to accept that call to give my yes to God, he is going to bring the increase. He is going to bring the disciples. And it's he who will disciple them through me, through you. But you have to ultimately succumb and let go of your will. It's like, not my will, Lord, but let yours be done. 
Amen. And so he says, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I am with you to the very ends of the age. What Jesus gives here is not a recommendation, but a command to go and make disciples of all nations. One thing I love about our church is that we are a very giving church. We are a very missional church. The Bible says to give honor where honor is due, so we want to honor you with that tonight. But I want to tell you something else tonight, too, that it is not just our job as pastors or missionaries, or any person doing any line of ministry work. It is not just our job to go and make disciples. Wherever your feet carry you, that is your mission field. Whether that is your job, whether that's your house, whether that's the gym, whether that's fill in the blank, you have a mission field and an assignment, a command from Jesus, just as well as any one of us. Because at the end of the day, we're only servants. My greatest calling is a servant, to go and lay my life down. No greater love than this to lay down one's life for his friend. And for those who are not yet friends to God, I want to make sure that they know that he is a friend and that he is welcoming them, that, welcoming them back home tonight. Amen? And no matter how far, no matter how, how far he got to reach, he is willing and ready at any given moment because there is nothing that can separate you or I from his love. It is a profound love. It is a love beyond comprehension. Wherever you, wherever your feet carry you, that is your mission field. That's why scripture says, how beautiful are the feet of those that carry good news or bring good news. And Jesus didn't clock on or off. Like, yes, he went to go and be with the Father and he spent time in solitude. He spent time to be realigned. He rested. But at the end of the day, Jesus was always ready to do his will, do the will of the Father. So the question tonight is, are you ready to do the will of the Father. Whose will have you been performing in? Yours, the world, or his? Regardless of whether you're operating in spirit or flesh, there is a calling on your life. And you need supernatural empowerment to fulfill that calling. Amen? I'm reminded of the guy who discipled me. I was a freshman in college. I was out in the party scene, drinking, smoking, messing around with girls. And one night, one of my, it was actually my suite mate in college in, in my dorm. He said, hey, bro, let's go to life group. And it's ironic because he was the same person that was going out with me, partying and drinking all that good jazz. Well, bad jazz, excuse me. But, uh, <laughs> but he says, uh, let's go to life group. I was like, bro, what is a life group? I don't know. We're just going to sit down and talk about life. So. I was like, all right, I ain't got nothing better to do. So we go sit down in a life group, and we talk about life. What life is like with Jesus? What life is like without Jesus? And that night was an answered prayer call, because maybe two weeks before that, I'm in my car having a mental breakdown, screaming at God, where are you at? If you real, show me, change my life, because if you don't, I'm either going to be dead or in jail. So two weeks later, I'm up in a life group where we just sitting down talking about life, life with Jesus, life without Jesus. But from that point on, I made a conscious decision that I would attend every single life group for that for the remainder of my college my college years. And a month in, I decided to give my life to Christ, November 2018. And so that's why I said five or six years from now, if you would have told me that I would be standing here before you tonight, I'd be like, oh, I think you're crazy. But no, it's, it's the fact that we have a God who loves us, who is always on time, a God who wants to have intimate, deep relationship with us, for us to know him personally. And so from that point, I get discipled for about six months, and I'm thinking, man, like the Lord has transformed so much of the brokenness that I've experienced growing up in my childhood. I was like, what else can he do? And so I just kept following him. And I just, I just kept saying, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. And in that, every single yes that you take leads you into the will and righteousness of God. And so I want to remind you tonight that you are not too far from God, whether you're saved or not. God wants you to know him. God wants to empower you to embrace all that this world is throwing at you to embrace his kingdom come, to embrace the truth of the gospel and declare it boldly in the face of the enemy or whoever else has a say against it. 
because the Lord is your defender, you need only to be still, but be empowered. Amen. So, if you heard nothing else tonight, I want you to know that there is nothing that the Lord can't do for you. Absolutely nothing. I want you to know that you can't convince a monkey that honey is sweeter than a banana. (laughs) But what the Holy Spirit does is he continues to aid us in the works that we have been prepared to do, that has been prepared for us to do, excuse me. So I want to remind you that tonight, that number one, the will of the Father is lived out by the empowered one. It is by God's power that we're able to do anything of eternal value, anything of significance. And the Holy Spirit helps us to know and walk out the will of the Father, to discern, is that from God? It sounds good. Let me remind you tonight, too, that everything that sounds good is not from God. But you know that when you, when you sit down and you pray, when you seek your, your spiritual mentors and your spiritual fathers and mothers, it's like, can you pray with me on this? I need to seek further instructions because everything that glitters is not gold. And the Father's will is recognized through the empowered one. Then I could look Satan in the face and say, I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. You have no business here. You have no hold over me, my family, my house, my church, so on and so forth. So anything that you to sign me up for, you can go ahead and cancel it. The subscri- I'm done subscribing to any lie because I have been revealed. I've been, the truth has been revealed to me. And the truth has set me free. The truth is setting you free. And if you're here for the first time or maybe you here for the first time after a long time, the truth will set you free tonight as you receive it. And I believe you will receive it. Amen. So tonight we're going to honor and commemorate our King Jesus with communion. Has everyone received the elements of communion? If you did not, go ahead and raise your hand and one of our ushers will gladly tend to you and we will wait on you. Amen. God is good. God is good. All right. Make it so. Bible says that we are not to take communion in an unworthy manner. So if you're not right with the Lord tonight and you want to be, you can. Whether that's starting over, I believe you'll pick up right where you left off with it. Or whether it's your first time, no greater night than to start now. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, I don't want to make an assumption that everyone is here, everyone in here is saved. So I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. But if you would say, Jairus, I want to live the empowered life to do and be all that it is God has called me to, to serve in my purpose, to serve in my calling with a confidence and a clarity that God will use me because I am surrendered to the power, the authority, the lordship of Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask that you simply raise your hand as a point of contact between you and the Lord. I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand. Anybody else? You would say, Jairus, I desire to live in right relationship with the Father. And tonight I want to make that decision. And I want to make it with the full confidence that he'll meet me right where I am in this house tonight. I see that hand. I see that hand. I'm going to ask every Christ follower in the room to pray with me. And if you raise your hand and you made that conscious decision, that includes you. So repeat after me. Jesus, I recognize that I am a sinner and that my sin separates me from you. I don't desire that anymore. Jesus come into my heart, come into my mind, and renew me in the things of your spirit so that I can be empowered to do all, to be all that you have called me to. And it is the most beautiful name of Jesus we all agree by saying amen. Give it up for several brothers and sisters who have decided to
to consciously follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's a good thing to serve a good king. So, now that we all in right standings, we have communion. Matthew 26 says this. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. So if you have not yet, you can go ahead and remove the clear plastic on top of the bread. We're going to pray. Jesus, thank you for your body. <laughs> thank you that you bore stripes on your back so that we could be healed, Jesus, so that we could be in right standing with God. Jesus, thank you that you did it all so that we would not have to endure death, but experience life in its fullest, here now and in his kingdom. And so Jesus, we don't ever want to forsake that, that, that great sacrifice. And so we honor you tonight, God. We remember you. And we pray that you would give us the strength, the power to continue to walk as vessels empowered through our bodies, through the temple, to do even greater because of you. And so we eat of the bread together. Verse 27, then he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, don't drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your blood that washes us white as snow. God, thank you for your blood that helps to redeem us. God, we recognize without you there is no way. You are the way, truth, and life. And so, Father, I pray that you would be quick to encourage, correct, and convict whenever we forsake or forget or are negligent of the blood that was shed for us. Let us drink together. Amen. Amen. I believe now you got the resources necessary to go and be the empowered one, to be the church. Amen. So I want to pray a blessing over you that this that the Lord would just continue to speak to you in regards to this message and that you would go and share it with somebody else you know God we thank you for your word God we thank you that you are still in our midst working out everything for the greater good of those who believe and so father we ask that you would just continue to remind us every day of the daily bread that you have for us let not our will be done father but let your will be done and your kingdom come. Father, let us be done with the ways of foolishness and walk in the ways of righteousness so that when people see us, they simply see you. And Father, I pray that we're reminded that our greatest calling is to be a servant, to lay down one's life, carrying his cross every single day because we recognize if we don't do that, we cannot be your disciples. And so, Father, empower us, lead us, guide us in the way until we see you in eternity. Father, we love you. We thank you. We pray all these things in your son's most beautiful name. And the church agreed by saying amen and amen. But thank you all so much for coming out tonight. Just a reminder that Wild Game is Friday. Man Cave and Thrive Night is next Wednesday. So we would love to see y'all. Come on out, invite a friend, and we will see y'all soon. Love y'all.